everybody. Welcome to the Hallmarkies podcast. And we are here to talk about our third batch of Thanksgiving movies for this very merry Thanksgiving, happy Thanksgiving weekend, whatever they called it this year. I don't even know. But there were eight movies. This is the third group of two for <laughs> this weekend. <laughs> and uh, we're talking about our Christmas mural and a built more Christmas. And I'm from Critic Risa Wagner and Jax is here. Yes, I missed you, Rachel. Missed you too. <laughs> Great to be back at it, and pretty soon we'll be doing it just like that. I mean, oh now the strike gosh. is over. Woohoo! Yeah. Yes, we'll be back for season three. <laughs> the hits keep coming. Yeah. So sad because there's all these shows that people are like, "You gotta watch the show. It's so great." And and yet, and then I and I, but I spend my life watching these shows I don't even like. <laughs> You know what we'll have to do? It's all... when, we'll have to pick one that we both really want to watch. <laughs> yeah. And that can be our next foray into it. But <laughs> we, like you said, you're a completionist. And I'm in this yeah. journey with you. Right. Exactly. <laughs> well, today we're talking Christmas mural and uh, built more Christmas. And uh, I don't know how many, how much of the season you've gotten to watch. Uh, have, you, have you seen, uh, do you have a feeling? How do you feel about Hallmark 2023? I haven't seen a ton, but I absolutely love Santa Summit. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Buddy sure. comedy. It's the it's the female buddy comedy that I have been craving that I was really mm-hmm. excited about. Yeah. Um. So I I'm excited that Hallmark is adding a little bit more comedy into things. I will tell you that when you know when I when you said I'd be doing this slate, I was like yes. Built more Christmas. So excited. That one's going to be so great. And then I was like, our Christmas mural <laughs> is going to be a snooze fest and so boring and bad. And uh-huh. I was so happy to be proven wrong. Yeah. Yeah. I'd say that both of the ones that we got today were both solid, both enjoyable. I have like nitpicks with both, but yeah, they were both pretty good. Yeah. Which, I mean, it makes sense for Merry Thanksgiving weekend. Is that what we're yeah. calling it? Is that what it was? <laughs> yeah. Something um, like that. It makes sense for this week that I think they do try and have a lot of their heavy hitters um, Uh this week. But yeah, I mean, I would say on the whole, the season has been a lot of like decent. Like there's been little that I've like hated, but there haven't been that many that I'm like loved and like super hyped for. What what has been your knock it out of the park so far? I mean, the Santa Summit for sure is is uh, definitely my favorite. And I, uh, I, I mean, still the, from Christmas in July, take me back for Christmas. Those are definitely the best. Those are the best two that they made all year. Um, what? <laughs> They're all kind of meshing together. I know. That's um, the thing. That's I the loved thing, yeah. a couple non Hallmark that I loved. I loved Xmas. Uh, oh, I need to watch that. It looks so freebie. cute. It was yep. so fun and it's adorable. Yeah, so I really enjoyed that. I really enjoyed Genie with Melissa McCarthy. I was I, not expecting to like that. I really wasn't because her streaming movies have not been good. And and I'm like, this is really funny. I really like the script. And I and then I was like, oh okay. And I looked. Richard Curtis wrote it. Who did Love Actually? Oh, About Time. I'm like, okay, this is making sense now. It was it was it was really good. And I love, uh, as far as features, I just am obsessed with the holdovers. Highly, highly recommend it. It, it, I gave it a perfect score. Holdovers. I don't, I don't As a feature, not I'm... just as like a, yeah, it's so good. It's Paul Giamatti. He plays oh, yes. a professor at this boys school. It's in the seventies. And, uh, he is responsible for watching this kid who's the holdover who doesn't have any place to go during the, during Christmas. And it's him, this kid and the cafeteria worker, uh, played by, uh, divine joy, Ra- Rudolph Randolph Randolph. Anyway, she's absolutely phenomenal. She's probably going to win an Oscar for it. Or she should. Um, and the kid, it's so amazing in he's the playing this high school kid. It was his first role ever. What? Ever. Yeah, I guess they did like a, a casting call at the actual college or or high school they were yeah. filming at. And they found him there through this casting call. Which That's is amazing. amazing. And he's so good. It was just, it's so funny, heartwarming. 
interesting. It it's it's so good. I can't recommend it more highly to everybody. Okay. Go see it. <laughs> okay, so I need to see that one then. And yes. Jeannie, even when I see Jeannie advertising, which I haven't watched yet, that line that Melissa McCarthy has where he says about Jesus being the son of God, and she's like I thought he was kidding. <laughs> I laugh every time. Well, and there's such a funny scene where she's she walks past a gym, and you see the guy with like the big, you know, the the overhang bars, whatever. And uh, she's like, "I thought that by this time, this kind of torture would have been would have disappeared." And he's like, "Oh, people pay for this." And she's like, yeah. "Sure, sure, sure." And then she goes up to the to the window, and she's like, "I will avenge you." <laughs> That was so comedic funny. genius. Like she's a true treasure. Yeah. <laughs> I love her so much. But as far as Hallmark, probably my uh next favorite would be Catch Me If You Claws. Oh, yes. I um really good. I love Luke McFarland. Yeah. I mean, who doesn't? Well, I do. I love him, but I did not like his movie last year. The Magical Wait. Christmas Village. I hated that movie. Oh, um, so I'm glad that, that he came back. And this year had two really strong notes of autumn I loved. And the yes. Catch Me Claws I really enjoyed. So anyway, that's that's uh, that's me so far. Ho, ho, ho. We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's the Hallmarkies Patreon. Do you love Hallmarkies podcast, especially at Christmas? Do you enjoy the holiday previews, recaps, interviews, and bonus episodes? If the answer is yes, please consider supporting the Hallmarkies Patreon. We need your help to do what we do both during the Christmas season and all year round. But not only do you help a podcast led by strong, independent women by becoming a Patreon, you get to become a part of the Hallmarkies family. Starting at only $2 a month as a patron, you will have access to our Facebook Patreon group where we talk about the movies, shows, and more all year. We also have many monthly patron watch-alongs with guests like Lacey Chabert, Natalie Hall, Paul Campbell, Mary Lou Henner, and more, giving their behind-the-scenes details of their films. As a patron, you also have the chance to provide input into the podcast and even join us at different tiers. So this Christmas season, spread some cheer to the Hallmarkies Patreon and become a member today. You won't regret it. Go to patreon.com slash Hallmarkies to learn more. That's patreon.com slash Hallmarkies. We have two today. And uh, so our Christmas mural, this one was definitely an acquisition. So I think that's why we all were like, oh, uh, but it's uh, directed by Tara Johns, writer Alan Donahue, and it's uh, stars... Alex Paxton Beasley and Dan Jeanette. And it's when single mom Olivia is secretly entered into a mural contest by her mom. She partners with the teacher, Will. So we kind of already said, but overall, what do you think of this one? Yeah, I thought this was really delightful and fun and heartwarming. Um, emotional without being emotionally manipulative, which was, mm -hmm. which was great. I liked that we had a little, a few years distance from the dad and husband's death, that it wasn't so fresh going in. I thought that the kid in this was incredible. Mm -hmm. and, and look, I'm not going to be in the habit of ever saying anything bad about any kid actors ever, because I just think they're wonderful. But mm -hmm. this kid, I thought really, really nailed it. He was really small and subtle with a lot of things and then like yeah. you could see his joy and enthusiasm grow as the movie went on and I thought that our two leads had great chemistry together and it was a mm -hmm. real slow burn and you can see how they actually would have fallen in love like not with the tropes and all that stuff but how they actually would have fallen in love by what they have in common mm -hmm. yeah no I basically agree with everything you said the, there's only one major major difference that I would make in this movie is I would have them both be working on the mural together I thought that that was gonna happen like, and I don't know why they did it <laughs> so they have her at the end she reveals the mural and then they add him into the mural that was sweet but like how fun would that have been if they had been having to design and execute it and paint it and all of that? There could have been so many fun, like flirty painting scenes. 
definitely. Why didn't we get our, you know how we have our baking montages that we love? Why didn't we get our painting montage where they're fucking painted each other and it's just all adorable. And then they're like reaching over each other twister style to like Mm -hmm. paint in certain areas. No, I I agree with you. I think that would have been really great. Because when they have the first near kiss, when they get pretty close, it did feel like it kind of came out of nowhere. That uh, from that point on, it was, I think the romance was, was a slow burn. Like you said, was pretty believable the way it was developed, but that first going from kind of enemies to, to lovers, like this, like longing look, like we see the near kiss. It was just like, what that like came out of nowhere. Yeah, I agree. Like, I feel like you could feel their chemistry before that, but it wouldn't have made sense for either one of them to go to kiss each other. Like, if that's mm-hmm. when the flirting, more direct flirting would have started rather than just the chemistry, because, mm-hmm. you know, you can have chemistry with someone and not be flirting with them. Yeah. And I think that's what we were seeing. They had chemistry, but they weren't flirting mm-hmm. so directly. But if they had been right. working on the mural together, then it would have been perfect. Like, it would have exactly. it really... But I love Dinoshanot. I think he is just great. He really is. I liked that, like, even in their, before their actual meet cute at the hardware store over the paint, which turns, you know, that's the enemies yeah. to lovers thing. I do like how they see each other at, um, like, City Hall. And they're actually smiling at each other the way I think feels very natural to like smile at someone that you think is cute and you're like are they looking at me and am i looking at them like what's happening i really liked that even just initial interaction yeah i think that he's honestly underrated as far as a leading man i feel like he's one you never kind of hear thrown out there as one of the favorites you know with your brennan elliott's and your palajas and all that but i think he has just as many hits in my opinion i do too and i think he he skews a little younger Mm-hmm. To me, mm-hmm. I don't know. Actually, I actually don't know his age, but he yeah. to me, he feels younger. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think I hope we see a lot more of him. So. Yeah, he's in. I mean, one of my favorites from Lifetime, Ghost of Christmas Past, uh, is a really clever uh, movie where uh, Annie Clark is the lead in that one, where she's ghosting. Uh, she's ghosted all of these people. And she gets to goes to this fortune teller and the fortune teller tells her that she needs to basically make up with all these people that she's ghosted uh, in order to find love. That's actually Whatever. really she has to a do a funny premise, Christmas. but it gets even better. So she's trying to make up with all these people that she ghosted and which is clever. Uh, but it, her, so he works with her and uh, he's kind of helping her through this whole process of like making up with all these people she's ghosted. But she the whole time, and we find this very the very beginning of the story. He, she ghosted him, big time. Like he was the big one. This Blinky one one eight two that uh, that it was like the biggest of all of the ghosting because some of them she just like didn't talk to that much or maybe one yeah one, one, one. and uh, and so he, he was the big one that she ghosted this whole time that she oh. like making up with all the. And, uh, and so you see that and she starts like talking with Blinky one, Blinky again. He's Blinky. And I don't know. So it makes That's it adorable. really fun. Yeah. That's really, really cute. I, I, I just, I thought it was so underrated and it was the year that, that, uh, Lifetime was doing a movie every single day during the holidays. And so they ended up airing on like a Tuesday night when nobody was going to see it. And so it, it just got underappreciated. So it was like. That year it was my year to, <laughs> to, to champion Ghost of Christmas Past. You're like I someone's thought it was got so, to. I thought it was so good, <laughs> and so I had the I had the writer on Shannon Latimer. I had Annie on. I had Dan on. <laughs> had, like really people need it. to know. Yeah, yeah. It's I I really like it. I think it's a very very good a good screenplay. It's something the kind of thing that I wish I had, I could I could write. Well, you're going to write something amazing because I think I texted you that I had a dream that you wrote a Christmas movie that I was auditioning <laughs> for and let's make that happen. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, they have the like, kind of like meet cute in uh, the, um, uh, the, the hardware store and they're all after the green paint and he's kind of a brat and he's like, you can mix these two colors together. And I mean, I would think that he could let her have one of those tubes, but 
whatever. <laughs> yeah, come on, dude. Like, please. Like, I know that it's for the kids, but let her have one. Yeah, one. And uh, we also get a little Ben Ayers cameo at that the beginning. He's her yeah. boss. And she finds out that basically in the next year, she's going to be losing her job in New York. And uh, she's a rare, uh, you know, good girl in the city. But I guess she's now going to the country. So she yeah, she, she hasn't been a, she hasn't been too corrupted by the city. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I love Ben Ayers, even in this little cameo. Yeah. It was so great. I also love fun. Cody, the the best friend guy who, you know, ended up really uh, standing up Olivia's best friend. But then they oh, reckon- yeah, he was he was cute and funny. He was. Yeah, he was cute, too. And uh, then we have uh, find out that he's that he's the art teacher. And uh, so her kid is going to be taking some art classes and uh, she wins this award where she gets the space to decorate to do the mural. Now, let's be clear. This mom is unhinged. <laughs> like, yeah. I was like, okay. Like, I'm glad she entered it. But also, there was a little bit of pushiness there. Yeah. Yeah. Her mom's kind of pushing her to be yeah, in the contest and also to, you know, to date this guy. And, uh, and so a busy body, busy body matchmaker mom. You know it. We love these tropes. Yeah. Um, so they talk about uh, art therapy and uh, and for his uh, for the son trying to help and that his dad is in heaven now. And that's when uh, when Dan says that my dad's also in heaven and they have that kind of connection. It was sweet. I really appreciated this because I think sometimes. We've talked about this before. I think these where it's like, oh, let me be your dad moments yeah. that can feel a little yucky. But I think instead of it being, I'm your new dad, I'm your replacement dad, it was like we went through the same thing, and they bonded through art and the loss of the of their fathers. So it never felt gross to me or mm-hmm. like, oh, this yeah. is moving fast. I thought it was a really beautiful connection that they shared. Yeah, you know who I think would really like this is Amanda Amanda Clutes. Oh yes, she would, she would. I think really, really appreciate this movie. You're and, right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so then we there, we I, this movie, and I have to say that for the most part, this season we're getting real lazy with the winter coats. I understand mm-hmm. that these movies are filmed in the summer. I get it, but like wearing a slightly thick shirt is not a coat. Not a coat. No, nope. And there's not even <laughs> enough hats or gloves no, that they're giving no, there us. Was nothing. I was nothing. like, Wait, where's this supposed to be? Uh, it was it supposed to be like Connecticut or something. New oh. Hampshire, which is cold. <laughs> it's cold. I was like, Dan, come on, bud. You gotta, you gotta wear the coat. <laughs> Sorry, we know you're hot in more ways than one. But like, come on, Dan. One hundred percent. Yeah. So he's from a family five kids. And he has 10 nieces uh, and nephews. And he says, I'm not cut out for being a parent. And he says, I don't want to have want my kid to have to live through what I did. And he says, you can't. And then she says, you can't let the fear of losing someone rob you of the joy of loving them. I wouldn't trade the good parts uh, I with all the, even with all the pain. <laughs> and, you know, it's interesting. I was, uh, I have I had a friend who uh, her her mother was really, really, really abusive. And she has decided and there's no problem with deciding not to have kids. Any that's a totally valid choice, obviously. But she she seemed at least the impression that I got from talking with her was that her decision to not have children was out of a fear of becoming her mother. And she couldn't risk that to a kid mm. right and this is a very loving wonderful person and that kind of makes me sad like i feel like any time that a decision is made out of fear rather than out of confidence and this is my choice and this is what i'm doing then um it, then that does kind of make me sad because she's not her mother and she shouldn't make that choice based on the choices of her mother she should just make the choice because that's what she you know wants to do out of her 
out of her life. And I kind of felt like that with this, you know, that yeah. he he's making the decision out of fear more than out of what he really wants. Yeah, I think that's so well said and, and beautiful the way you put it about making the decision out of fear, because, yeah, it, it's. You know, because they're so blocked with the fear of this, you can't really even dissect your own, you know, feelings and thoughts about the subject mm-hmm. yet because you can't think clearly enough to be like, OK, is this something I want? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so then, oh boy, he drew drew the family picture, and then he has the, his dad as the angel. Oh, so, so cute! So, so cute. It's adorable. I just <laughs> love this kid. I love yeah. this kid. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they said that mothers aren't critics. <laughs> She's talking about her art, and her the mothers aren't critics, and and uh, that that's that's true. Uh, I. <laughs> it's not their job. Their job is to just be like, great job. Yeah. You know? Here you want. Yeah. <laughs> One thing I think is funny in these movies is I I have never known anybody who does s'mores as part of Christmas. Yeah, actually me either. You see it all the time in these movies. I think because it's easy to do in the summer. It doesn't require yep. snow or, you know, anything like that. And so you can, you can have them by the fire. And I feel like it's actually more of a summer thing. Go yeah, I think of it as like a campfire. Yeah, yeah, but they- <laughs> it's more of a Fourth of July, actually. Yeah. When I'm thinking about, I mean, I don't do s'mores that often, but if I did, mm-hmm. it would. Well, be the so they're they're snuggling with their uh their s'more eating, and uh, they have this kiss, and she she's into it for like thirty seconds, and then she's she she goes she freaks out and uh, and leaves because she feels like she's betraying her husband i mean those 30 seconds look good though like yeah. it looked like a good kiss it didn't look like one of those kisses where you're like okay I, mm, yeah. yeah yeah it's good it's good um so uh there's that and uh the the mom says sometimes your way of helping comp well she says to the mom sometimes your way of helping complicates things uh that she feels like if she admits um, that she feels like if she moves out of New York, she admits that she's failed and that she will be, it's the last place that she was there with, with the husband. Yeah. I thought that this conversation, it was actually nice to see a conversation, you know, with her mom that was very sort of grounded in this real thing of like, please, I actually just need you to listen. And then the mom mm-hmm. did that. Um which isn't always the case in real life Mm -hmm. um, for any sort of relationship. Yeah. It was hard to hear her say that like she was holding on to that life that she had with her husband Mm -hmm. and that she felt like she needed to stay to continue that life. Well, and I've said this many times on the podcast, but one thing I'm totally over is the whole conflict of, Oh, we live different places. Therefore that's it. There's no hope for our relationship, but at least like with this, they had like there was motivation they explained why it was particularly difficult for her to move why it was particularly you know but she was seriously considering it it wasn't because that's where it becomes unbelievable that somebody would just be like it's a like it's not that it's not even an option like of course she would think about it and and uh and so that was good it was good character motivation for her yeah, and I actually thought that he might move because he made enough comments about Wellington. Yeah, but he yeah, obviously I see that. loves it. Yeah. But then he was like, oh, and he's like, oh, I probably wouldn't have left Boston if there were more opportunities. I'm like, is he going to move to the city? I can see that. Yeah, yeah. And so when they ask Parker about moving and he says that the little boy says, uh, daddy doesn't live there. He's here wherever we are. Oh. Oh, that did something to me. I was like, oh, Parker, you were paying attention. You're right. Your mom yeah. needs to hear that from the mouths of babes. So they've had this kind of fight after the kiss. and uh, But she makes sure that he's there for the unveiling. And, and then she says, I'm sorry for pushing you away the other night. I panicked. And then she says, I realize I'm ready to fall in love again. And I am falling in love. And then Parker and I want to have your you in the picture, literally <laughs> in the picture. And uh, and there we go. It was happy family. It was it was great. I was yeah. um, 
this is through no fault of our Christmas mural, but I'm just going to let you know the inner workings of my <laughs> sick brain, which is like, yeah, like Hallmark Christmas and then like, um, like <laughs> true crime. I've jumped back into the John Benet Ramsey case because I, you know, think I'm going to solve it, you know, 25 years later. And I was just reading about the paintbrush. And then I see her holding up the paintbrush at the end of this. And I was like, <laughs> No, 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 no. Um, so again, not the faults of our Christmas mural, which was a beautiful movie, but don't read about, don't read graphic de- details of the Tom and Ramsey case right before watching this movie. You took it to a dark place there. Yeah, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I don't know what it is, Rachel. It's like how I'm unwinding at night now, and it's not good. <laughs> That's really funny. Yeah. So, so it was, it was cute. And and I like the fact that this was believable as far as her age and like it was a, like a little bit more of a mature love story, but like yeah. it it didn't feel like the Ariel Pebble uh, National Parks movie is to me the ultimate example of a movie that was clearly written for somebody in their 20s played by somebody who's 40. And it doesn't make sense because I mean, they're all talking about she's just this is like her first job. She's just getting out of school. She's just finishing school. Like none of this stuff like made sense for somebody that's 40. You're and, like, what uh, were you doing in the meantime? Yeah. Like, living off a trust <laughs> yeah. fund? Yeah. Whereas this, I felt like it it all made sense for kind of who they are and who they they've lived life and they experience things and, and everything. So I appreciate that. Um Definitely. yeah, I would give this one like a 3.5. I thought it was well done. Yeah, I would too. And something else that I was relieved by at the end is that that mural looked pretty good. You know, sometimes yeah. in these movies, yeah. like <laughs> something is unveiled and you're like, <laughs> oh, oh my. Yeah. and I'm no artist, but you're like, oh my <laughs> goodness gracious. This looked the nice. worst one of all is the was the wreaths, the one with Daniel Lissing. Oh, I, I hated those wreaths yes. so much. <laughs> oh, yes. I don't know how you got through some of those movies on Bubbly Sash. Yeah, I mean, looking back, it's funny because, like, I never <laughs> felt like I was lying. But, like, I, I would, like, just, like, really focus. It's like when I go, I've been in many shows that are, like, not very good or seen my friends. And, like, when I go to see plays and they're not good, like, it happens. Uh-huh. So you can just focus on the good. But sometimes you just want to snark a little, you know? Yeah. <laughs> We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's The Trouble with Mistletoe by Jennifer Snow. It is the first of the Brook Hollow series. In bestselling author Jennifer Snow's sweet, wholesome Christmas romance, The Trouble with Mistletoe, our heroine learns that you can't say no to a mistletoe kiss no matter who's under it. Since leaving Brook Hollow and her fiancé Luke Dawson 12 years earlier, Victoria Mason hasn't looked back. She's traded the small town dream of marriage, kids, and family Christmas dinners for late nights working at a high-powered acquisitions firm, lunches at trendy New York restaurants, and jet-setting vacations on the slopes. So her latest work assignment to acquire Brook Hollow's sporting goods store poses a challenge for Victoria in more ways than one because it's almost Christmas and she's got other holiday plans and the owner is reluctant to sell and the owner is Luke. She needs to wrap up the deal before she gets caught up in her old life and her old love or becomes trapped under the mistletoe again. You can find The Trouble with the Mistletoe by Jennifer Snow wherever you purchase your holiday reads or use the affiliate link in the description below. More Christmas. So this is director John Pooch, uh, writer Marcy Holland, uh, and it stars Bethany Joy Lentz and Christopher Palaha and Jonathan Frakes. And it follows Lucy as she's hired to write the script for a remake of a holiday movie. She joins a tour of the grounds. And when she knocks an hourglass over, she finds herself transported back in time to 1946. So for this one, I, I, I did really enjoy it. I, I think it'd be hard to ask for much more, I think from a Hallmark movie. I mean, the only, I have little nitpicks. I I kind of wish that it wasn't a Hallmark movie because I wish it was a Netflix movie because then they could have a little bit more time. And I I do think there's certain parts of it that feel a little rushed. And it was just like, if they had 20 more minutes, I think it would be perfect. I think that analysis is spot on. Like in many ways, it didn't, it felt like it had a bigger budget than most Hallmark movies, which I'm sure it did have yeah. a little bit bigger of a budget. We're actually at the Biltmore itself, but 
And and I actually don't I don't have like I'm interested to hear your particular moments because I don't have anything off the top of my head, but I do agree with the fact that it did feel like it wrapped up pretty quickly. And I am loving playing in this world with them. So I want it to last a little longer. Well, just like her journey uh, of going from this jaded kind of person to, you know, being in love at the end and especially like him falling in love with her didn't really make sense. I mean, they spent hardly any time together. Yeah. And that he would like not only be so in love with her that he would, you know, like continually seek her out, but that he would sacrifice his whole life, you know, basically like to be <laughs> with her at the end. He knows it. Yeah. So th- that was almost, it was really more of a problem of just not enough time of the two of them together. Uh, that I think if it had 20 more minutes, if we'd gotten like a, a little bit more, maybe time dating, a li- just more time. It was really only like one day. Yeah. Well, curious because this was, you know, obviously like at this point, um, most of the time we know where these endings are going. We can predict. I actually didn't know for this one and was wondering what was going to happen. What other things were in your head of how this could have ended? Well, I think that it could have been a, a sweet ending of like, he, he inspires, like she saves his life, but he, then that's, what's important is that she saves his life. But, uh, but in, and then he inspires her to find love. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that, that, that would have been, I think enough. We don't necessarily need to see them together in the end. Right. That's the thing that I was wondering, like, if it would have been like, she meets like his great grandson or something, you know what I mean? Or yeah, something like that. But yeah, when I saw that, that he had still died I I agree I thought that there was something in me that wanted to be like oh no I want him to know like his success which I guess he does now because he's all the way in the future (laughs) yeah well and I also think that Jonathan Frakes was like completely wasted you did not need to have him he was you could have had any actor playing that role you did not need him I wonder why they didn't utilize him more no I mean (sighs) I, there's tons of character actors and maybe who knows why they picked him. Uh, they were just trying to get the Star Trek crowd. I mean, he didn't do a bad job. It was just like, it just felt like, wow, he was underused. You could have used literally anybody. Totally. Yeah. Because there wasn't a lot in there that any one of our wonderful, like Canadian actors that they usually use. Yeah. I mean, I get this was obviously filmed in Nashville, but, um, but mm-hmm. like, it it did it did it was interesting to me that they did choose that. I was so excited that we got to see so much of the estate. I was there once. Oh, you were? Well, yes, but I will say this. I was doing a tour of a children's or yeah, of a children's theater show. And the person who ran the theater was like, I'm gonna take you guys to the Biltmore. But they didn't want to pay for us all to get in. So we had to oh. like lay on the floor of the van and like sneak in. So I've been at the Biltmore and it was great. <laughs> like let me say it was not top notch treatment, Rachel. <laughs> well you're stowaway. So- <laughs> How do they expect you to treat this? <laughs> stowaways at the Biltmore. Yep. Exactly. But I gotta give Plaha huge credit. He is he was the, I mean, he was great in this movie. And I, it's, it's really interesting because, uh, you know, he was in small town, uh, small town Christmas and he was trying to channel Jimmy Stewart in that yes. pretty successfully. That was a cute movie. And then he's in this where he was obviously channeling Cary Grant. It was mm-hmm. obvious. And, uh, and he did, I think an inc- a great job. Like he was wonderful. Like if I was, if I was out there looking for a Cary Grant type, like, I don't know how Christopher Blah is not on your list in, in Hollywood at this point. Yeah, I agree. His performance was fantastic. And and that's not an easy role to emulate someone like Cary Grant. No. <laughs> and um, Joy, I, so I don't know if we're calling her Joy or Bethany. Or, well, what are I'm we a little confused her? by that, too. I've seen Same. it. 
I've seen it different ways. So I don't know. So sorry. Uh, I think it's joy, but I'm not positive. I, no, I, I think you're right, too. And people I've heard talk about her that know her better, I think, usually say joy. So mm-hmm. well, we could say joy. But um, she's so great in these movies. Like, she mm-hmm. gets it. Mm-hmm. She really. And I thought that she took some parts that could have been not as believable, played by a less skilled actress like when you're yeah. thrown back in time and she reacts in a way that I'm like oh this feels authentic to this very quirky unbelievable world mm-hmm. I do like her better in roles where she's she is allowed to be a little bit quirkier and she's allowed to be I kind of like her better in sort of the manic pixie dream ish kind of roles mm-hmm. as opposed to this where she's like very cynical for a lot of the movie and and she does have an arc and she grows and changes and everything. So, but it is kind of frustrating because there are so many people who tow that line of that uh, that happy endings aren't realistic and they're you're not being honest with the viewer and that kind of thing. And I just roll my eyes with that. And and again, the movie she learns that that's not true. So I'm fine with it. But on the other hand, it was frustrating to hear that vocalized because so many people, so many people buy it. Yes. Also, I had a question for you for something that I actually just didn't understand. And I think maybe I misheard it or didn't get it in the movie. He, you know, obviously tells his wife since he's passed away, like, you know, lets her know it's okay to be with the other man. But something about he he's not getting his wings for that like he's giving up getting his wings for her okay, to be so happy with him i mean this is obviously based on the bishop's wife yes obviously and uh and so he i think he's giving up his wings because he went he wanted to talk to her oh and tell her that oh my gosh that okay that that's I think Thank you. No, that makes sense. That makes sense. Because in my mind, I was like, why he's actually doing this selfless thing, but he wanted to tell her that. Okay. All right. Yeah. I got you now. So basically there's this, like the leads of the movie, his married wife, Claude Lancaster, Ava Hayworth, they don't get along and there's sort of this rivalry between them. And uh, then you have Jack Houston who's playing the angel and uh, he's trying to get them in the movie. He's trying to get them to get along and to make up just like in the Bishop's wife. And, uh, and uh, it's, it's interesting because so you have the, you have the Bishop's wife and you have the preacher's wife and the Bishop's wife. Uh, you've the, it's not the same as far as it's, it's more implied in the preacher's wife that the, that the angel falls in love with, Whitney Houston in that one. I mean, how could you not? <laughs> yeah. Then in the, it's easier to believe that Cary Grant is just a platonic in uh, The Bishop's Wife mm-hmm. uh, because I don't know, it just is. Then because uh, yeah. they have such good chemistry and, and, and in The Preacher's Wife and Whitney Houston doesn't have as good a chemistry with Courtney B. Vance and he's such yeah. a grump for so much of the movie and um, you know it, th- those are both I think good movies and especially The Preacher's Wife I mean that has one of the greatest soundtracks like ever it's so it is so good <laughs> just to listen to the songs who can, ima- who can imagine a king oh so good um, but anyway and so there's that and that she wants to change the ending. And I was so funny because I wrote on Twitter, I was like, I'm mad at her for wanting to change the ending. Yes. It's not even a real movie. <laughs> no, but Rachel, yes. I was like, you think you know better, girl? Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> like, because so many people are, I guess, so many people are like her that, and they don't have the arc in the end. Like, I'm, I'm like, I know that she will come around because it's a Hallmark movie, but there are so many people who think that, uh, that, who think like the cynical ending is, is the more honest ending is the more, you know, and I'm just like, you know, my parents, they've been married for, uh, for 45 years and yeah. have been relatively happy. It's not been this like horrible experience. And, 
And it does happen. Like there are, there are happy couples all over the place. And so the idea that like showing a happy couple, a happy ending is less honest, just really annoys me. Also like, yes. Is, is this a happy ending? Sure. But like, it's also quite bittersweet. Like, it's not like, it's not like, oh, he's alive now. And we're all like, it's, Mm -hmm. it's actually like, very and you know you're talking about like this element of like sacrifice and I think that's also what annoyed me she was mm-hmm. cynical about true love which like you said like a lot of people are and she's also cynical about people doing selfless acts and I'm like oh this is right. just too much yeah, this is true. too much cynicism for me it's just yeah. too much she literally at one point says bah humbug to the script that was <laughs> We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's the Hallmarkies Merch Store. Are you looking for that perfect gift for the postable, hardy, or Hallmarkie in your life? What about getting that t-shirt or hoodie that will help you stand out at your next holiday party? Now is the time to check out the Hallmarkies Merch Store. Full of festive designs by artists like Jessica Miller, Carrie from Hallmark Comics, and more. You can even have more than just shirts, but totes, cell phone cases, notebooks, mugs, and more. And it isn't just Hallmark. We have designs for Anna Green Gables, Man from Snowy River, The Nanny, and more. Every purchase at the merch store goes to help support the podcast and allows us to make the great content you know and love. There are frequent sales, so go to tpublic.com slash stores slash Hallmarkies or see the link in the description. That's tpublic.com slash stores slash Hallmarkies. Uh-huh. Yeah, and she tells them, tells them at first her name is Sandra Bullock, which is funny. That was funny. That was funny. And is that that this is that the greatest gift you can give me is to live your life and find your happiness, and uh, and uh, so then she she's kind of thinking and she finds uh, that the 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 lady thinks that she's a ghost. <laughs> like a ghost. That was awesome. <laughs> that lady was really funny. Yeah. And so the next time she goes over, she is wearing like period accurate clothes. So. And she does look good. Like, uh, let's be real. Like all the clothes from that time were so gorgeous. I could never keep up with that. (laughs) Uh, Except for I absolutely hated that dress. I thought. Oh, the one at the end? Yeah. Her ball gown, whatever. Like she's beautiful. I, I hated it so much. You, you, I, I, I I hated the fact that it was black. I hated that it had those panels. I hated that it not only was it an off the shoulder dress, which is fine, but it it was a very low on her bust. And so it didn't fit her well. It needed to be moved up. And uh, and so it cut her off kind of in a in a unflattering place. It looked like she was squeezed into it. It didn't look it and so I hated the dress, but even even so it was it was a bad dress for her and her body and and in the way that the skirt was it cut her off in the in, in her midsex so it made her look really hippie and she's not i mean it was just i hated the dress so you know much it was horrible you know it's <laughs> funny i didn't hate it as much as you but i did look at it and think the way you know you're talking about the way that the things did the things at the top like every i was like this feels like none of it is is fitting right and like it, it wouldn't be comfortable well. and like yeah. that's weird because when she was running obviously it's hard to run a dress anyway but when she was running i'm like there's too much to worry about on this dress yeah it just yeah. wasn't it was ugly it just was i hated it it was so, <laughs> and uh and I, I i wasn't a big fan of her hair either but that was less you know that was just that period of hair d- design isn't my favorite but um but yeah that i just i just I just hated that dress. So what are you going to do? <laughs> I love but... thinking of it coming on and you being like, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> well, it makes sense I, why, I, Re- why Rita gave her yeah. that one instead of the hot red one that she was wearing. Well, it was really clear that obviously that it was the Bishop wife and then it was, he was being Cary Grant because like just little things when he says, I started out as a stunt man, yeah. which Cary Grant technically started out as a, a circus performer, actually. His oh. name was Archibald, Archibald Leach was Cary Grant's original name. And uh, in um, in uh, the movie Ho- Holiday, not the Holiday, just Holiday with uh, Catherine Hepburn, you actually get to see him doing uh, um, 
uh, like an, a trapeze acrobat. Oh, thing. that's he, cool. Yeah, he does a um, not somersault, um, handstand, whatever. I um, love that. Yeah. So, <laughs> I mean, that's why he could pull off the physical comedy so well because he something like bringing a baby. Uh, or talk of the town or some of these ones were required him to be really expressive and really because he had worked in like in circus performance and uh and acrobatics and stuff so he could climb up on top of the the dinosaurs and he could swing from the you know stuff like that in uh in roles and that's incredible when it's like in your body like that like mm-hmm. i feel like people mm-hmm. who have studied clowning or have been clowns are always just so funny Mm-hmm. When they're like, they just know, like, there's a joy to that kind of work, I think. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and she says to him, I'm not down on romance. I just want to write something that's real and meaningful. And uh, and then he says, can't be more, can it get, can't, it can't get more meaningful than two lonely hearts finding a little slice of happiness in this crazy world. And, and when she said that, that it just like my, I had like a, almost like a, in, a guttural reaction of like, ah, so many people think that so many people think that sweet romance can't be real or meaningful. And I feel like I've, I've like dedicated my, my life to proving that wrong. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, cause like, it's like, so Oh, that. it, you know, it's interesting that you said you sort of had like that, like guttural reaction. Cause I also, in that moment did sort of feel the the closest thing to like this rage is probably too strong, but it's like, Oh, so you think that just because something is dark that that makes it more real. Like yeah. what? And I like dark stuff too. Like, don't get me wrong, but like it doesn't inherently make it more yeah. real. And I think people misunderstand that all the time. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like a lot of people love the ending to La La Land and it, it has its value. I don't hate it. Uh, but I would like it just as much. And it would be just as honest and just as meaningful if they actually fought for their relationship and they actually tried. Yeah. Instead of just yeah. giving up because, oh, our dreams are so important. You know, I mean. <laughs> And so and it, it, it's just frustrating because I feel like that is just the constant battle. And that's why I wish that we'd had more time because she yeah. changes without really like, why does she change? And why does he love her? I have no idea. They hardly spend any time together. He, he, she taught him how to high five. That was about <laughs> it. <laughs> and I mean, if that doesn't make you fall in love on the spot, yeah, I Rachel, guess. I don't know what would. <laughs> Um, so she says life ra- rarely gives us happy endings and uh, and that uh, they just say christmas is, is good for two things reconnecting with people and we love and eggnog <laughs> and eggnog so there we go uh, i will say i loved when um you know the the little kid who eventually becomes her boss when he's trying to reach that candy that he loves as an adult man. I was like, I love this. And I think it's so cute. Yeah. Yeah. And he says, I, I feel like I've always meant to, I've always meant to know you. And she says, this isn't real. And I wasn't expecting you. And that's when she says, Oh, I'm from the future. And we get our, we get our kiss. And I glad, I'm glad that you came into my life. Even if it's only for a while. And then and she tries to tell him that he's going to die. And I mean, that's where I think this could have been a, a poetic way of ending it is that she saves his life and, and learns to believe in love again. Like that would be really nice. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I'm actually surprised given like where Hallmark is trying to go with a little bit more complexity and nuance and pushing the envelope a little bit in their storytelling that it didn't yeah. end that way. Yeah, because because that would have been believable for the amount of time that they have spent together. Oh, that totally. would have been more realistic. That would have been meaningful. That would have been poetic more so than because there's just no reason why he would for somebody he's just spent two days with, but I mean, it's fine. It's fine. I'm, I'm spending too much time talking about it. Cause it was fine and it was very sweet. Um, uh, and, uh, and so, 
uh, he, she, she, they, they go back, you get a year later and they, and I do like that they had a uh, heavy little Merry Little Christmas with Judy Garland. Singing. Oh, that was very, very Rachel, nice. it was so good. <laughs> they paid, they must pay a lot of money for that. So thank you, Hallmark. Yeah. And so she's got the happy ending and, uh, and I liked that whole scene where they're both lying on the bed in different times. Oh, that was great. And, yeah. Think about it. And, and then we get the remake that they're shooting and Wes Brown and Rachel Boston, fun cameo. Cameo. That was so cute. And I love how they were like, I think it's going to be better than check into Christmas. The that shade I <laughs> shade of their own movie. <laughs> Not going to be better really than check cute. into Christmas. I love that movie. <laughs> it was really good. I do love check into Christmas so much. No I, I was so excited to see them in this cameo. They're adorable. Yeah, that was cute. Uh, <laughs> it was fun. Uh, and then I, uh, then I thought you'd like to see the hourglass one last time uh, before the ghost of the Sisonian. And, but she decides to not go back, which again would have been really poetic. If, if then, and then she finds out, Oh, I saved his life. And that would have been beautiful. Yeah. Cause when she said like, goodbye, Jack, I was like, Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like yeah. she's choosing not to open that door again. And then he shows up and says, she said, he says, you're a hard one to forget. And uh, you would give up everything you've ever known for me? He says, yes, because I love you. <laughs> it's like, well, that's a big. And so then they make sure that the hourglass stays in the middle. So that that part was cool, too. It was cute. That was cute. I mean, it would be they should have even just given it to them. Then they could flip back and forth all they want. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> go back and forth in time like let's do it please <laughs> it was too bad that they kind of had to be localized to just the Biltmore which why yeah. wouldn't you want but like it would have been funny to have seen her reaction to other stuff in the 1940s that's true that she had to like, that live with funny. it <laughs> yeah that she's like like okay what is this yeah <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, I have to use the giant, like giant phones, and there's like one in this huge hotel, or yeah. you know, just things like that could have been could have been fun. Uh, but uh, but yeah, I feel like I've been hard on this, but it really was quite enchanting. It was it was well done, great leads. Uh, it was well made. It was well shot. It, this is, I mean, this is a homework movie, so <laughs> it was good. Well, I, I enjoyed it. I think you're being hard on it because it was that good that you can be. And I think that that's, I appreciate that, you know, like you as a critic, like, I think that that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Like when something is better, you can actually like have nuanced conversations about it. Yeah. It's kind of like, I was talking to my friend the other day about, uh, they were talking about the dark night and he was saying, because it's on such a level that like, the the when you when you that you can spend an ordinary amount of time kind of nitpicking a little bit because yes. it's already established we've already agreed that it's on this high level yeah so so the, we're talking about what makes it like the little tiny little things at that point yeah. and I'm not saying it's this movie's on Dark Knight level but I'm just saying that that there I, there are a few little things that. I think I just wish it had been on Netflix. I think that would it then it would have been perfect and I would give it a five. But yeah. overall it was still really uh really good. And I think that Palaha was uh in top form, probably maybe the best we've ever seen him. He was great. Yeah, I think it's so in his wheelhouse. Yeah. Um yeah, and you can tell he's having fun, which mm-hmm. I really appreciate too. Like you can tell he's loving every minute yeah. of it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I would give this one like 4.25 or something like that. Yeah, I would give it a 4.5 because I agree. I think like still Sand and Summit is my top. Yeah. Um, But I think that this really, it's really so incredible when Hallmark does actually get to film in places like Graceland and the Biltmore. Like, I think it's very, very cool that Mm -hmm. they get to take us to these places. And I really hope they do more of that. It's a lot of fun. Well, yeah. And in this one, they actually like used the hotel. They actually, yes. like you said, we saw a lot of it as opposed to Graceland where we saw like two rooms. Yeah. So yeah, this is a lot better. We saw more of the Graceland hotel than we did of actual Graceland. We sure did. Graceland. We sure <laughs> so, did. Yeah. 
Uh, so there we go. That's this movie. So let us know in the comments on Twitter what you think of these two. We'd love to hear your thoughts. And uh, and Jax, where can people find you? Um, at Jacqueline Collier on Instagram. Great. And you can find me at Rachel's Reviews, all of our social media, iTunes, YouTube, and on Rotten Tomatoes. So check that out. Also, make sure you are following the podcast, Homework Keys Pod and Homework Keys Podcast, all of our social media. And if you are listening on iTunes, please leave your ratings and reviews five stars. It really helps us a lot. And if you are watching on YouTube, please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. We appreciate that so much. We also have our patron group, which is a ton of fun chance to get to talk to the stars. And this month we had director Lee Friedlander on for our watch along. It's going to happen tomorrow that we're recording this, but it will happen this week. So that's so fun and so cool. So please check out the Patreon and you get lots of exclusive reviews and other stuff. So please, please, please look at that. And then we also have the merch store, which has some fun new designs. This season, I kind of took a Barbie inspiration uh, in uh, with working with our designer, uh, Jessica, to come up with uh, these new, uh, new designs. So check it out. I think you'll enjoy it. And uh, that's it. I hope you all have a very, very, very Merry Christmas. We'll talk to you all later. Bye. Bye.